Okay, time for a range report. I was finally able to get this thing to the range for the very first time after rebarreling it. And um, before I get into that, I want to talk about the uh, the rifle itself a little bit. Of course, this is my Savage Impulse. That's what this whole series has been about. That's the Predator version uh, with the detachable box magazine. I got a couple of 10 rounders for it. And um, well, right now I have the bolt, bolt handle on the left side. Let's see it over there. Um, which is one of the things that I really liked about this and kind of drew me towards uh, this platform is because I shoot left-handed and the ability to move that bolt to either side left-handed for me or right-handed for my son or whoever is is really pretty neat but uh, right now still in the um, standard or the the factory stock and I just added a optic saddle blanket on the end or on the cheek piece uh, I think that's just their kind of generic model that I cut to fit because they don't have one specific for the impulse and all these cheek pieces, um, the, the Impulse comes with, I don't know, three or four different height cheek pieces. So um, that's just the one that seemed to line up best with my scope. So I got it. That's the one I got on there right now. Um, so it's got a Leupold VX6 on top, 3 to 18 power. It's a fine scope. I like it. There's nothing. It's not really fancy or special. So moving on. Um... Down at the end, we have the uh, Silencer Central. Uh, this is the Varmeter 4.0, which is the same as their Banish. They just renamed the Banish or the Varmeter 4.0 to Banish uh, a while back. Really like the can. I've used it on a number of different rifles, and it performs really well. It completely comes apart, so it's easy to clean. Um, what else? Well, you know, it leaves the barrel itself. Of course, we. Uh, Looked at rebarreling this thing. It, it, it came in uh, 243 Winchester, which is fine cartridge by its own right, but uh, I wanted it to be 22 caliber. So that's why we have this barrel here, which is chambered in 22 Creedmoor. And this is, let me just set this down here. This is from Black Hole Weaponry, and it's, uh, again, it's 22 Creedmoor. It's 20 inches long. Twist is 1 in 8. And um, you saw in the previous videos, I had a little bit, bit of an issue getting it to headspace. I had to add a couple of threads to the uh, to the tenon here, which really wasn't that bad once I got the, the proper die and everything. But... Um, yesterday I was finally able to get it out and shoot it a little bit in this this new configuration so what I'm shooting is 75 ELD and I'm using uh, reloader 16 and there's not oh, and also alpha brass there's there's not a whole lot of information that I could find out there about using Reloader 16. There's a lot more for um, Hajin 4350, which I, I have some of that too. I wanted to try the Reloader 16 just because I have a bunch of it and I don't currently use it in any other rifle. So I wanted to see how it'll do. And so because there's not a whole lot of information out there that I could find, at least initially, um, I decided to start with just kind of a velocity pressure test ladder here. So I only shot two rounds at each charge weight and I went from 38.3 uh, up to 41 grains of Reloader 16. And um, again, just two shots just to kind of see where things are at, see what velocity um, I'd be at. I have a magneto speed that I I run on a mount, um, so it's not actually on the barrel. That's where I'm getting my velocity numbers from. But um, anyway, 
we can see looking at maybe we can see looking at this um of course there's only two shots here you can't even really call it a group but um in a number of cases that one got a little bit wider on me I got all number of excuse, of excuses why I didn't shoot a little bit better, but um, one of them being I, I found that like a black reticle on a mostly black target this small on a hundred yards is probably not ideal. Um, but anyway, in in a lot of cases it shot pretty well, or at least it's showing some promise there. Forty point four looks pretty good. Forty one zero looks pretty good. But um, anyway, this, I mean, nothing concrete there, but, you know, at least I uh, have an idea and, you know, I can see that, you know, it at least shows some, some promise of being able to shoot well with, uh, with that combination of, of uh, components. And then I got my velocity data here. I got up to, oh, mid to upper 3100s here with the highest charge weight and, I've since done a little bit more research, and it seems like I can probably, with the 75 grain bullet, I can probably go even a little bit higher than 41 grains. Um, if I look at my brass, there's really nothing to see. So these ones here at the bottom, those are the highest charge weights. And if this thing will focus decently... Uh, we can see that the primers all have, still have a nice... Uh, rounded radius on them. I don't see any proper flattening. Uh, the, the case head itself looks really good. I don't see any marks whatsoever. Of course, uh, a lot of people will tell you that once you start seeing actual signs of pressure on your, on your brass, you're already way over pressure. But um, I'm not seeing any indication of any problems there. And it shot you know pretty well so i'm probably going to keep um, move up a little bit higher from 41 grains um be great to get into that 3200 feet per second uh, area but um do a little bit more testing and shoot of course i'll shoot some you know three and five round groups at, uh, at a couple of these charges whatever i figure out from analyzing all this but uh, that'll be later. So for right now, like I said, at least it, look, it, it looks like it has some promise. And we'll be shooting it more to see if I can get something dialed in.